All right, so I'm going to show you the ProMaster 5111 gimbal head for a tripod. Uh, I found some pretty creative uses for it, so that's why I thought I'd make a little YouTube video for it. And then we'll see what you think. All right, so what I'm doing first is attaching this to my tripod base plate. It can also go straight onto a tripod, not this one, but it can go onto a regular photo one. And uh, that works great too, I just find this easier. So, put it on backwards this time. XTI, a relic basically from uh, 27, 2007, 2008, and this is my Canon EFS 10 to 22 ultra wide angle lens. Uh, I have that on there because it's the one I can use to shoot spherical panoramas for real estate. So I'm just going to grab a quick exposure. So the good thing about having it on this video tripod is I can level it off perfectly right away. If I'm on a regular photo tripod, I gotta fiddle with all the legs, which when I'm doing real estate photos, I don't like to waste that kind of time. So this this gimbal is basically designed for long lenses so that your center of gravity is more balanced as opposed to having a center of gravity right underneath the camera and then anytime you loosen up your tripod head your lens comes crashing down. So that's what this is regularly designed for. What I found it useful for is spherical panoramas. So that's why it's got this tiny body on it because there's actually not a whole lot of space. It's plenty of room if it was a lens but because it's the camera body on here it's actually hardly enough room at all. So also for spherical panoramas, you need to find your uh, entrance pupil, which is basically where all the light is filtered through before it hits your lens and starts spreading out again. So that's right about here. I can only get it to right about here because this is a tripod head that's not designed for this use. But still, it does, it does the trick. And it's about half the price of the next cheapest one. So I'm just gonna show you how I make a panorama with this thing. Basically it's eight in a circle and then 60 degrees up and 60 degrees down. I'm shooting four every 90 degrees. So that leaves you with about 16 photos and I will show you the panorama when it's all done. Usually I'm actually a lot more precise. Like, got all sorts of little markings here. And I'll actually measure those out when I'm shooting in a house, but because this one I want to be quick for the video, I just thought I'd show you kind of how fast it can be. And so that's that. Pretty quick and easy little thing to play with, and it lets you make all sorts of photospheres and um, panoramas and all that kind of crazy stuff.